Uh, so, uh, Ro, uh, we've talked a lot about the library, your system for showing the books, the people you've had come into the library, uh, little children who've maybe found books that they weren't ready for and just thought were boring. Um, and you, you have a lot of, frankly, community here. Now, between the talks you've given at U of T, uh, between this event and other events you hold at the library, you've really fostered a sense of community. Um, when I'm going through posts about the library or your own website, that's mm -hmm. what I find. And I think mm -hmm. it's really nice to actually see a comics community, um, especially within Toronto, because there are so many independent publishers and mm -hmm. actual local Toronto, Toronto artists. Um, so how, about, how is it that you've gone about fostering that sense of community? Um, that's great to hear, <laughs> first of all. Um, it, to be honest, it was, it, it's been challenging. It's probably one of our biggest challenges because um, we are not quite in a central space. So getting the community in Regent Park to kind of visit the space is a challenge. Um, mm -hmm. And that only happens over time with holding regular library hours and events and sort of putting posters up around the area and getting the kind of news out on like a uh, what's it called list serves and um, we've uh, like email lists oh, okay. um, and uh, something we've started doing is contributing to the Regent Park newsletter so we have yes. a comics corner in the newsletter that uh, Jordan's been running <laughs> yeah he told me about the yeah. most recent one he made I thought it was hilarious yeah and then we we have our weekly library hours and we have drawing club every Sunday we have we try and kind of build community through social media so that's been a big challenge for me because I'm a pretty um, I don't like social media <laughs> but it, it's a necessary <laughs> evil and um, <laughs> but but it can be used in a good way like yeah. through Instagram to share other people's events and tell people when we're hosting things and share like our online resources and uh, just try to get um, comics events the news about events out there um, there are a great number of really amazing community spaces for comics in Toronto. We want it to be another one. The Beguiling is, is amazing, for example. Um, and we want to kind of spread, spread comics to people who might not necessarily have read them before as well, okay. through being in this shared community space in Regent Park and through making the collection more accessible. Um, I think comics, I'm people who make comics that I've spoken to often say that it can be a very solitary uh, endeavor. <laughs> yeah. Um, you sort From of. From personal experience, yeah. 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 Oh, you make uh, comics. I don't well. make comics, but as someone who I ingest them, um, I find often Reading. when I'm. Yeah, I read them. I read them on my own. Yeah. Um, and just maybe it's just the type of people currently being en masse drawn to comics. I don't find a lot of discussion about it. Yeah. Although that might be me being a hermit. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I find it's definitely a little bit. It's an introspective thing. Yeah. Where, yeah, and that can be nice sometimes and necessary, but it's also sometimes nice to sort of like be alone together with other people and yes. and talking about the things that you're passionate about. And so, um, so having having things like drawing club and a space like this, I think is. Um, I know it's something I've wanted for a really long time and other sp people I've spoken with. Um, so yeah, that, it's been important in that way. Um, we also have been hosting uh, events as much as we can with the, the sort of challenge of that is we want to be able to provide fair pay to people who host workshops and, and um, who host events. So we were really lucky to receive a grant through the Toronto Arts Council this year where we hosted five comics creator residencies. Oh, sweet. And every month that we had the residency, we had at least one kind of big free community workshop event or artist talk. And that's been really important for building community. We haven't announced this yet, but oh. um, we will be announcing another grant that we receive soon um, for, uh, I'll, just, I'll just tell you. If for, you feel <laughs> comfortable, sure. For, um, comics Read Out Loud events. Oh, that cool. Are, um, we're aiming to be accessible for uh, people who are, um, who are visually impaired. Yeah. Yeah, um, and <laughs> so uh, and and so we will be hosting more events uh, in the next uh, throughout the year, once every two months, uh, something like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so and yeah, I think that's 
that's how we how we're trying to build community and Beautiful. it's also been a challenge for me because I'm as you can probably have guessed I'm a pretty shy person and, yeah but I like I like chatting with people one-on-one -on -one and being around people but um, yeah so. well yeah and, and I think like me uh, I don't know about you, but personally, the idea of like going to a big party with like tons of people, that scares me. I like the idea of being able to, if I have some people over, it's a handful of people that way I can talk with everyone. Yeah. And that's kind of the vibe I get with you and frankly with the space that you've created, it's very much welcoming mm -hmm. and it's calm enough that if I happen to sit down one day, grab a comic off the shelf, someone beside me could be reading a different comic and then we mm -hmm. could stop and sort of talk to each other about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, for me anyway, I mean, I, I'm not a big guy to post on forums and uh, yeah. Superman is this or whatever. I think that's the kind of discussion about comics that I want. Um, yeah. And to be able to share that kind of a thought, especially with something like an autobiography, mm -hmm. um, where you can really take a lot of introspective and, and personal meaning out of it yeah. and then share it with somebody. Yeah. Um, and I think... If it sort of feels like a living room here, I think. The yeah. furniture moves around a little bit for events, and events can be a lot a lot busier and like l less intimate in that way, but um, it's, I think it's a super cozy space. If you visit us, um, you can grab coffee and tea, and you can mm. hang out on the couches, and you can draw. There's lots of tables. Uh, there's art supplies. Um, so, so yeah, it's a very it's a very cozy space. We I hope people feel that way. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, this couch is great, and anyone mm -hmm. who comes can sit on the couch as long yeah. as it's not taken. I should also mention we feel very lucky to have this partnership with the Center for Social Innovation, which is the lounge where we're located. Uh, this entire third floor is the Center for Social Innovation, okay. and it was it was like kismet really that Denise, the community manager, they were looking for something to fill this space, which was basically just a closet and a wall and like some tables and chairs and there wasn't much here so we sort of we took over the closet area Perfect. and a lot of the the goals with CSI the Center for Social Innovation and the library project are similar in terms of wanting to have like an accessible space and feel like making it welcoming to community mm. members including people who don't just work out of the building for example so families and kids in the Regent Park area and really just making the space more inviting and cozy yeah. and, and uh, yeah so yeah and, and for instance um, that I don't want to make sure we're not limiting anything you've said the Regent Park area it's because it's where we are mm -hmm. but for instance I live out in Scarborough obviously we'd be welcome as well so it's not just Regent Park it's just you have to be located here yeah but anyone I imagine anywhere really oh, yeah. would be able to come in uh, and grab a membership and start reading and enjoying Absolutely, and that's that's why we're trying to ho hold more events um, because we do want uh, people to kind of have an excuse to come down here and then be in the space, and hopefully they'll keep mm -hmm. coming to the space. And then, um, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I can't remember what I was going to say, but it's uh, all right. Yeah. Um, now, as we've discussed. Um, memberships and community mm -hmm. um, I would like to join the library now how can I do that so um, yes I should mention uh, memberships are free or pay what you can with a suggested donation of five dollars a year and that helps us pay for library supplies more than anything um, and you can also pay an additional five dollars and then that'll go towards another community members membership so we have a pool of free memberships all the time <laughs> um, and but oftentimes, if there's uh, like community members or teenagers that come in here, we'll just give them free memberships, of course. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you can you can support us through becoming a member. We'd love to have more people just come and hang out in the lounge and read comics and come to our events. Um, another way you can support us is through our um, Patreon. So we have uh, Patreon through our okay. our website. Um, we'll have a link. Yeah, and. Uh, you can support us for as little as I think a dollar or two dollars a month and you get uh, some perks through being a patron of the library uh, including uh, sort of advanced news so you get uh, notice of uh, announcements or events um, before anyone else you get we keep a library journal here where volunteers write an entry every day about how their shift went visitors um, anything that happened that was exciting or not exciting <laughs> um, and so patrons get uh, 
uh, like a photo of, of journal entries, which oh, can cool. be pretty cute and interesting sometimes. Um, and then we also have uh, it set up so that community members can donate to us through PayPal on our website. Um, and I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything else. Um, I think I think that's about all. Oh, that's quite a lot yeah. of different ways. That's really yeah. good. You've really yeah. sort of diversified. Oh, I should also mention, um, we haven't announced this yet, but we're hoping to have, um, we're working on creating an online store as well so that people can buy like t-shirts and totes with Ooh. some artist designs and our logo as another way to fundraise to support the project because we are a nonprofit, which I don't think I've mentioned and we're completely volunteer run right now. So so it's um, it, it's a big challenge, but, um, sure, yeah. but we're trying to you know, we want this to last a long time and we want to be sustainable, so we're, we're uh, brainstorming how we can... For sure. Going. I mean, it sounds like you're doing a really good job. Now, I would like to become a member, um, mm -hmm. so could you show me the, the form and what the card looks like? That way I know yeah. what I'll have on me and all that good stuff. Yeah, so um, the form is just uh, one sheet of paper. Most of the fields are optional. Basically, we just need a name and a signature, your email if you want to receive communication from us. Um, we are working on making the collection circulating as well. So you have to give us your email if you want to be able to take home comics eventually. That makes sense, I think. Um, and then if you're younger than 13, you need parental permission. Um, that's yep. basically the form. There's a few questions on there that are completely optional that were just for our interests, like um, do you enjoy reading comic books, which we might not keep on, on there, <laughs> um, but, um, but we're, we're interested because a lot of people who are in this space, which is a shared space, haven't necessarily read comics before. The last time they saw a comic was their younger brother when they were kids was reading a comic, or, oh. or there's a lot of newcomers in the area, so they haven't had access to as many, as many narratives as we have. So Never fill out the form. <laughs> and then... Um, and then this is our membership card. Beautiful. Once you fill out the form, we enter your information in our like uh, library software and you're in the system, so you don't actually need to have the card on you all the time because we have your, your last name and your information in the system. Okay. But yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, simple, easy, and like I said, you don't have to have it on you. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I'll keep it on me. I like the look of the <laughs> card. Um, so yes, I will definitely be signing up for likely three of these uh, and as well I would like to donate to you guys um, some books that I've got so uh, staying with BIPOC creators um, indigenous creators specifically mm -hmm. um, I've got a series of books so I have Prism Stalker for you uh, which is written by a indigenous creator um, and then I have Moonshot Volumes 1 and 2 <laughs> uh, which are collected stories of indigenous creators Thank you. Um, and finally, uh, the outside circle, uh, mm -hmm. which is about uh, an indigenous person who goes through a lot, um, mm -hmm. and in, through reconnecting with their history and their culture, it sort of helps them through their story. Mm -hmm. um, now, other than people reading them, because as we've discussed previously, mm -hmm. you already have a copy of the outside circle. So, mm -hmm. if someone like myself happens to have a book that you already have, how would that go to helping the library? Um, so yeah, we, we have a copy of The Outside Circle. We also are very lucky to have a copy of Moonshot, the first volume. We don't have the second one, so. but thank you um, so much. Uh, what, so right now, we are keeping duplicate comics in case mm -hmm. we can open another library branch somewhere or as a means of fundraising for the project. So to have things like raffles at events um, and uh, giveaways, uh, stuff like for that. For sure. Yeah. So <laughs> potentially, uh, for whatever reason, um, because you already have Outside Circle, my copy, someone might be able to purchase for their own home to help fund the library, or you could hold on to it, and when you expand, or depending on how quickly that happens, you very well might have that copy in another library. Yes, and we also do, um, we currently lent, uh, we gave, donated duplicate kids comics to uh, Story Planet, which oh, is a really wonderful um, charity in Toronto that runs storytelling uh, workshops for kids okay. in all different mediums in underfunded areas and schools. So in their library, um, they have a small collection of duplicate comics from that people have donated um, to our collection. And we're, we are looking for other spaces that could potentially benefit from having some comics in their space. So if you have an idea for another space that might need uh, some, some comics, um, or you could you could see really wanting comics, let us know. 
Um, and you can you can email us if you Google Canada Comics Open Library, we'll come yes. up. We have feedback forms on almost every page of our website. If you yep. fill out those forms, it goes directly to me. Uh, and our email is info at canadacomicsol.org. You can also uh, find us on Instagram and Twitter at canadacomicsol. We're also on Facebook. I think if you just look up Canada Comics Open Library, you'll find us on Facebook. And if not, there's a link to our Facebook on our website too. Alrighty. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. I did want to say one, thank you very much for sitting down with us uh, here at Wednesday Night Reviews. Um, I look forward to seeing your expansion, your growth, and the upcoming events. So I'll be sure to, down below, put links to everything that I can for you. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. It was, it was nice. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I usually feel really nervous during interviews, <laughs> but, but um, this is lovely. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you. <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for tuning in uh, to Wednesday Night Reviews. Again, this is Ro, or Rotem, uh, the president and librarian of Canada Comics Open Library. So you can come find us at 585 Dundas Street East on the third floor. Uh, you can find us online, www.canadacomicsol.org. Uh, you can find us on social media, uh, at Canada Comics OL on Twitter and Instagram. We have a Patreon you can access on our website. Um, we have a blog on our website. Um, I think that's about all. We have Drawing Club every Sunday as well. Uh, we have weekday uh, library volunteer run hours right now from 11 to 6, Wednesday through Sunday. Um, and we might cha be changing our hours as well in a few months to be able to stay open later so that people who work 9 to 5s can be able to visit our space. Um, so yeah, we hope we hope to see you soon. Mm -hmm.